So the SDR gives us a, a series of samples, just complex numbers, one after another, is like a vector. This is given in time domain, as you saw before. So once we do the Fourier transform of these samples, we have the power spectrum, right, over this first, over this first of a vector in time domain. Problem is what happens when, for instance, I have one carrier here that moves, which is modulated and moves in amplitude or in moves in frequency. We do not capture this information we, if we do only one Fourier transform operation. So what we have to do, we have to use, in this case, separate our time domain samples in several different chunks, several different parts. So we do not have a single vector anymore, but we have a collection of different vectors here. So now each one of these vectors, we are doing the individual Fourier transform of them. So that's the basic idea we are talking. And these chunks, these smaller chunks here, of course, they are much smaller than the initial one. So let's say we have one second in the black, we are gonna have 10 milliseconds in the chunk in the red part here. So we do individual Fourier transforms for each one of these individual chunks. And in order to visualize, we do not have a vector anymore. We don't have this thing here anymore. We have a collection of several different power spectrum. How can we visualize this thing? We use the so-called waterfall. So we assemble these vectors in frequency domain. Now we are talking about the frequency domain. Each one we assemble vertically in a matrix. So that's the basic idea we see a waterfall. Then when we analyze the waterfall, we see, for instance, let me show you here, for instance, if I have this movement in one of the carriers that are within our band, that is within our band, we see something like this. It starts here, then it moves here, then it moves here, then it goes back here, here. So as you can see, this direction here has the parameter of time. And this here has the parameter of frequency. So that's the basic idea of the waterfall plot. Then we can see dynamically how the Fourier transform changes in time. Here we have, uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of the waterfall plot here to uh, a very nice plot we can see under GNU radio. Here I have one block of the RTL, it's pretty simple. And here I have attached, in addition to the GUI frequency sync, I have attached this GUI waterfall sync. So what happens uh, here, I'm just uh, watching uh, two, uh, 1 megahertz around 100 megahertz. And when I when I here we have the frequency domain, right? We have the frequency domain here. This is the, uh, I guess every half a second it's updated. And here we have what you call waterfall. You see the waterfall is actually superimposing, as we said before, the frequency domain, each uh, half, uh, half a second, 500 millisecond vector that we see here, it's updated here. In, so, so that here we have, as I said before, the time. And here I have the frequency. So the waterfall plot shows dynamically how the frequency spectrum changes over time. So, so this is very important for radar. This is very important for several different uh, frequency monitoring uh, monitoring uh, systems. So there we can see how the power changes over our over time. So how can we do that in Python? So now I'm seeing here the Spider ID. 
like the program to perform this just giving you a little notion of the overview of the program to generate the waterfall it's pretty much a copy and paste of what we did before the only difference here is uh, as you can expect we are performing this uh waterfall plot assembling the matrix using this four uh, loop four here and uh, we define it a variable called number of chunk and by number of chunk we actually computed number of chunk we divided the original uh, time domain series in three so we have the number of samples which is as we saw before 200 milliseconds because i am multiplying the sample rate by 0.2 and this 200 milliseconds i am dividing by three so actually i will have three different uh, vectors I'm dividing the original time domain series in three. And uh, for that, I need to define a matrix here. As you can see, the matrix is defined as zeros first using this NumPy function zeros. And I am, I am the chunk size is defined simply here as I'm just dividing the number of samples by the number of chunk and I am using the round operation here. So that I need to have, to, I need to have an integer. And then I define the matrix as just made up of zeros. Uh, I start running the count, the, the loop here. And every time I run, I perform this FFT operation. I am not using this, uh, the other uh, operation before, the other operation that I, we have used before, because I need to have access to the frequency uh, spectrum and the frequency vector. So that's the difference between the other one was just for, uh, let me go back here, this one here, uh, PSD just plots our, uh, just for the plotting purposes, it does not give you access to the variables, at least I haven't found it. Here I use the normal FFT and uh, why I'm using um, minus two is just a, just a simple trick to get rid of the DC uh, upper, the DC, uh, the central DC leaking in my vector. It's not needed. Uh, the usual FFT shift so that I bring all the, the I, I unfold the spectrum. This is quite known. I'm not going to delve too much deeper into it. And just this is another trick here. You can do it, perform it different. But uh, when count is one, I mean, in the first in the first the first time i perform this operation i store the vector here and the, after the second time i start using the vstack the vstack operation from numpy actually uh, assembles the whole matrix uh, puts one on uh, each vector each frequency domain vector is put, is placed on top of the former one right that's basically the idea and uh, uh, important here is the is this uh, color p color mesh operation p color mesh requires just uh, i just it's just a way to uh, visualize the matrix um, there are several options of shading you can check on on later and i also added this color bar which is very interesting to see how it works uh, in terms of of uh, of uh, amplitudes and uh, i'm I'm computing here the uh, frequency domain in dB. So I'm taking the, the absolute of the samples. I am squaring the absolute and I multiply. I'm taking the logarithm and multiplying by 10. Right? That's that's the one I'm, I'm trying to see in, in, in dBs, something like, uh, related to dBs. Uh, that's basically what I wanted to show. Uh, just to remind you a couple of things. This The, the, the unit here cannot be taken as dBm. Uh, it's better to use all the time some sort of uh, normalization in terms of the maximum unless you do some calibration with uh, let's say RF generator there is also op op uh, I'm showing you later but there are options to uh, actually you have to use two uh, XX and YY here which are the units for my waterfall plot I'm not using here uh, whoever is uh, accustomed to MATLAB, you know that you have to use this to create another matrix with the, the units. I'm just for simplicity here to, so that the video doesn't get too long. I'm just showing directly the matrix here, but you can have also the time and the frequency units. There's no big deal about it. Um, I'm running it 
and as you can as you can remember i'm just taking two 100 milliseconds uh, but you can see as i run let me put it back here the sdr as i run here it takes a while it takes a while for the images to be updated it's not something you have to be very careful as i said before we are dealing with a lot of samples we are dealing with uh, fft which is not very fast so uh, that is one of the three samples that i'm showing you here the way it's assembled the first one comes here the second one comes here the third one comes here this is the, the color bar and as you can see we have this big peak here shows up here this guy here shows up here and this guy here shows up here i'm just taking a very small uh, a very small sample I'm, I'm a very small a very short time period so that it doesn't get too long but you saw that it's not instantaneous uh next thing i didn't i didn't mention but it it has to be uh, uh, you have to be very careful uh how short can be can my chunks be here i i made a computing it's more or less uh, 60 66 milliseconds uh don't forget that when i make my chunk size very small i lose frequency resolution so if i make a very very small a very tiny uh, a chunk so let's say 100 samples for instance i will pay a price in terms of frequency resolution these peaks here they are going to be very coarse so there's a trade-off a trade-off between uh, time and frequency resolution as you remember and it has to be taken into account this is something that you have to experience you have to uh, make a lot of experiments in in the real world with the practice depends on your experiment you have to take one option or another make it chunk larger or smaller that's it thank you very much